I have been waiting to share this with you for so long now. Check these out. These are the original hand cut stencils. Yes, each and every one of them. I used a marker on these really giant playing cards and then I cut them out with an X-Acto knife and gave myself carpal tunnel. So we had them made with proper plastic sheets from a work of heart studio. We resized them and you can purchase the entire set in large or in small, which is really fun because those are perfect on like a little four by six jelly plate. Anyhow, I got my paints in rainbow order here. These are the new Liquitex Basic Fluids, which is great. Yes, the video is sped up just a little because I'm going to just keep going around the rainbow and you're going to get tired of me talking if I don't speed it up just a little. We'd be on here for over an hour. You know how it is when you start jelly plate printing. Anyhow, I came up with this idea. What if we didn't make mud anymore while we're doing our jelly plate prints? What if we just go around the rainbow starting with red I mean, you could start anywhere as long as you have them in rainbow order right uh roy g biv or the color wheel however you want to think of it and i want you to just imagine that you never have to clean your plate again and you'll still have bright clean colors now i'm using my jelly plate and other texture to just pull off uh colors just so you can see how easy this is to get bright, fun colors going around with each and every one of these paints. Yeah, I found them. They're really cheap. They're like $5 or less at Michael's uh, with your coupon. Anyhow, see, some texture. We're just getting our base coats. I hope that you find this kind of fun and delight to the eyes, mixing a little bit of the warm and the yellow. See how that's just mixing together? I just I'm smitten with this whole system and what's really fun is Andrea who is the owner of a work of heart studio who helped me have the stencils made she and I have come up with a lot of different ways not only to use the stencils but also with this rainbow color method it works for so many other things imagine not having to wash off your brush anymore not having to uh clean off your stencil dauber or any of the things that we normally do that we have a lot of like washing and cleaning up if you go in order of the color wheel you have a lot less changing you have to do because the colors start blending seamlessly now of course there are times where we want to mix and match and make mud because that grunge is really beautiful on the jelly plate but for those of you who want a more clean palette not necessarily a rainbow palette. Now I'll show you what I do is because then we go into more analogous and color patterns that work really well together. That yellow and green together makes such a vibrant lime, grass green, whatever you want to call it. And I'm using a pot holder there to make some texture. Each and every one of these has its own charm. So folks, you kind of get the point of what I'm saying here. It's really uh, an interesting concept to just lay out all those colors and roll out the paint one by one and change them in order. Of course, you don't have to do the entire rainbow, but I'm trying to show you, especially this mix right here. I love the green and the teal together. It makes a good kind of minty color. Um, and found objects make great texture. Anyhow, I'm going to give you a chance to just watch the rest of this in super speed. Uh, I think you get the idea. One thing I want to point out is you see this paper on the side of my discharge sheet, as you will. A lot of people just put scrap paper down to roll off their brayer or whatever else that they're working on. Well, I'm working on this idea of layering, and that's actually a large art journal. So what I've been doing is flipping the pages once I start getting beautiful layers, because then I have a whole journal filled with the most perfect pages already ready to go to add another layer, whether it'll be with stencils or 
some of the other pattern making things that I've been working on, like making my own foam stamps. That's a lesson for another day. Now, for those of you who don't normally use a jelly plate, you may be new to this, really put on just a good thin layer of acrylic paint, roll it out with a brayer, and then pull it up with a piece of paper. I like using cheap copy paper or deli paper or found papers, doesn't really matter. Thin paper works great if you wanna use it later for collage. I use thin paper even if I'm gonna to continue to add more layers to it and it works just great. But anything goes when it comes to the jelly plate, it's about experimenting. There are a few tips and tricks and I'll tell you a few more of those later, but now you see we have our entire collection done bright colors, didn't have to wash the plate once. And as you can see, if we switch them around, well, they all can just keep going in order, which, you know, I mean, if you understand the color wheel, which I hope you do, because I always have color wheel lessons for you. Now for the stencils in their pure form. This is where we start layering and mixing too. So oftentimes I'll mix my colors right on the plate. Yes, there are some fancy tricks you can do to get rainbow colors, but honestly, I'm just going for solids when I use this layering method because my goal is to just get the paint on and make some layers. Look at those fun florals. They are a little bit juvenile, maybe 70s-ish but I really love them. So I didn't have to clean my plate and I don't even have to clean off that pattern, but I will get myself a clean sheet here and clean off the brayer because see now what I was gonna show you is put on a big piece of deli paper, let it dry. That means like three, four, five minutes, depends on your area and it'll pull the whole thing clean. Fun little trick for you there. I've learned the longer you let that paper wait, the more likely you're gonna get a clean, clear print pull. All right, let's pick another stencil and I'm gonna use the exact same paper I was using before so I can show you how these layer really beautifully. And it takes some practice to learn what colors to layer on which and whether to go big to small or small to big for your patterns, but that's all about the play. See how that turned out? I'm gonna to continue to go ahead and go around the color wheel. Of course, this is a, a different day, a different jelly plate stenciling go-to. I've got the suns here, and the suns are probably one of my favorite. The suns and the clouds are my favorite stencils because they have this just fun, cheery feel. But if you do them right, yeah, you can get a lot of really beautiful prints off of it. Little trick there, roll off the paint onto your discharge sheet more yellow. I'm going to continue to go around the color wheel because I'm going to keep that philosophy while I'm adding all my layers. But that doesn't mean that I'm keeping to the color wheel as far as which page to put it on. It's a discerning choice to make. I really like analogous colors, meaning red, yellow, red, orange, yellow, or blue, green, purple. When, when they're in the same family or next to each other on the color wheel, you end up getting better, cleaner prints. Um, but sometimes you can go for an opposite uh, when you've got complementary colors and it'll work. You just have to be really thoughtful about it. it. Depends on how transparent the paint is. So when you add white, it's more opaque, like here with this orange and you tend to end up with a better print when you're going on either a darker color like this purple you know, purple and orange aren't exactly opposite, but they're pretty opposite, and that still worked really well. And then I'm going to just pull up some of this on the edges. I really like both using copy paper and the deli paper, because what happens with the deli paper is it ends up turning into some of my very best collage material. And then on the copy paper, oftentimes with several layers of paint and then the acrylic paint pens, I end up with practically finished works of art. I mean, I'm not sure they're the kind you'd ever want to hang on your wall, but what they are are really beautiful patterns, and I intend to have products made out of them. There you go. There's some pink flowers on yellow. Pink and yellow look nice together. I'm sticking in the pink range here for just a little bit because my goal is to build up some layers with some of these colors. 
Um, again, see I like that large one and then the smaller print on it can go even tinier than that. Oftentimes I like to do a little teeny tiny print, a larger print, and then a medium print and maybe a small print again. At least three or four pulls with the stencils to get my finished product. This is something I think that actually takes practice. It's not like you're gonna get each piece turning out perfect, but sometimes you have pulls like this one where you've got that beautiful green in the background and then the pink stars just kind of complemented it really well. There's a quinacridone magenta, well, a fake color of it because it was only a $5 bottle, but there you go with my X's. I love the X's and O's together too. That was my original intent was to do the big circles. I think I'll be doing one of those in a little bit here, but the big circles and then the X's on top of them. You know, you can just follow along on Kelly Wynn Studios or Color Crush Creative and you're going to see all kinds of ideas coming out of me over the next several months. I have a lot of really cool projects planned with these stencils for the beauty of their simplicity is that there's just so many ways that I can use them that are unconventional, if you will, and really pushing me to think outside of the box. I would love for any of you who are either using this idea with your own stencils or if you've purchased these stencils, see there's that big circle. I love that's probably my favorite one. I don't know what it is. I just love it. There's so many ideas for it, but I'd love to see what you come up with. Like tag me, tag Color Crush Creative. I want to see what you're going to do. Here you go with that kind of violet color. I let it sit for a while so the whole thing pulled off. I'm going to take a little pause and look at what I've already been creating, see if I like the colors and the patterns. That yellow one with the red wasn't so great now, was it? Um, and this also gives me an idea of which ones need a lot more work. So I'll stop and I'll think, yeah, there's some that I love. That last one there, that blue with the orange did not work out. I have a lot of unfinished pages. So, you know, this is one of those things that can go way late into the night. I once I get started I just can't stop and <laughs> probably do this I've been doing this you know since last summer all just for myself not with the intention of sharing or showing until it solidified for me and really the pleasure of it you know and this whole time I was using my own handmade stencils which were great it's just hard to do hard on the hands so having them made for me was really fun um yeah, look, we were going all the way around the color wheel now. It's blue. It's cloud time. And layering those blue clouds on the purple. I think it's a perfect match. Let's see how it turns out. Yep. Too fun. I like to draw in little raindrops too for that. I'm going to see if I can pull some more off. Sometimes you don't even have to pull it off. Uh, pull the stencil off before you pull another uh, pull from that. And then let's pull all of that off. Yeah, kind of messy, but that's fun. Those are the ones that you want to do like white clouds again on top of the, the negative space. All right, I'm going to create a little texture. And then we'll see if that texture turns out when we pull. I don't think you can see it though in the video. All right, now I'm going to play around with some of my favorite colors going back into the teals. I really like it when I do, um, you know, some pops of color. Sometimes putting teal on top of the pink is great or a lime green with the pink works really beautifully too. In this case, I'm going to get a little carried away with um, the polka dots because they really kind of pull everything together. I cannot wait to show you too. We've got this idea, Andrea and I have been cooking up on how to make um, drop shadows using these stencils. Also looking at how to make uh, our own washi tape, uh, using them on fabric, and some of the concepts with these layering I can just see working really well um, on different materials and even going larger. So, as you can see, the, the potential is kind of endless, and I do just keep on going. So 
So definitely don't hesitate to ask me questions in the comments below. It really is my pleasure to answer. If you haven't experienced the jelly plate before, I hopefully I've gotten you addicted to it now. Um, I'd love to see what you do, with maybe designing your own stencils. Just get yourself some Tyvek or heavy card stock. Um, use some a black Sharpie marker and just design out something really natural and organic and cut it out. Um, there you go, my favorite mint color layering. These are all tone on tone and honestly they make such beautiful pages when you're done really fun for collage and that's the other thing that I'm I'm working on is is how do I take it to that next level with collage because you know what good is it if we're going to just make a ton of prints and never use them correct correct All right, my favorite one again, on yellow. Green and yellow work pretty well together. And then I'm gonna mix it with some white and blue and make like a nice mint. One more time. I really like how this one turned out. So we'll stop there. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how I doodled. Now I'm not taking a long time to show you because this is hours and hours worth of work. It's basically picking out different parts of the design and highlighting it either with the same color or similar color, sometimes complementary, making marks, polka dots and checks and X's and O's and different ways in which I kind of let the work inspire me. See those flowers are popping off. The page now and you're getting yourself a beautiful design here's another one that I was working on I was making the stars brighter actually using fluorescence and then that's a white um, correction pen <laughs> and Brooke Henry BB uh, Henry art she's the one who showed me about that and it's like I can't get enough of it and a black ink pen because pink and black look beautiful together so you can see how this becomes like that beautiful meditative process. You know, something that you're watching that only takes about 30 seconds was really like a half hour to an hour long, depending on how detailed I get with it. I put on my favorite podcasts, Confession. They're usually business podcasts because I am slightly obsessed with business. Um, sometimes a favorite TV show like Anthony Bourdain. And I just relax into it. And that's the reason why I've been doing this for the past year for myself, because it's really, really enjoyable. And I hope that you've enjoyed learning about this process where I've returned to play for myself. And I've begun creating something new and out of the ordinary for myself. Um, I don't know if it's unique, but it's unique to me. And I enjoy it thoroughly. And I totally enjoyed sharing it with you and I hope to hear from you what this inspires in you and what you create next with it.